welcome to Within the Frame. I'm Handan in Seoul. President Yoon Sung Yeol's week-long Central Asia tour will conclude tomorrow. During his trip to key Central Asian nations, namely Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan, he discussed with his counterparts on ways to elevate their partnership to a new level, with a shared vision for sustainable growth and economic diversification. From energy and infrastructure to technology and education, burgeoning partnerships across various sectors not only underscores Korea's strategic interest in Central Asia, but also highlights the region's growing significance on the global stage. For a detailed analysis on President Yoon's trip and prospects for Korea and Central Asia's interconnected future, Dulat Bakishev, professor of Central Asia Studies at Hanguk University of Foreign Studies, now joins us in the studio. He previously served as the Kazakh ambassador to South Korea. It's a great pleasure to have you on our show. Thank you for the invitation. All right, let's first begin with the significance of President Yoon's trip. What do you think about the significance of his Central Asia tour uh, that came amid rising geopolitical tensions and uh, economic uncertainties around the world? From my perspective, uh, it's true that uh, geopolitical tensions are rising, economical difficulties are there, but uh, when Cold War or was there, we had no opportunity to interact because uh, our Central Asian states were not independent. So happily we are independent and the South Korean president is visiting us. It's a very uh, good thing. It's very significant. Uh, also because uh, we need uh, to cooperate more. Uh, Korea can offer us uh, modern technology and a developed country's uh, view on uh, life, let's speak like that. Uh, and uh, we can offer uh, not only resources, I mean natural resources or key minerals, but uh, we have very young, talented and energetic people. Right. Uh, things have gotten so much better since the Cold War era, but but still now the world faces growing trade protectionism and competition is also fierce to secure critical minerals. And so hopes are high that President Yoon's trip to Central Asia uh, will help achieve just that and also help facilitate mutually beneficial economic cooperation between Korea and Central Asian nations. President Yoon's Case Silk Road initiative was front and center during his summits uh, with leaders of Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, as well as Uzbekistan. What are your thoughts on the initiative and how do you gauge the economic as well as political benefits of the regional strategy? So when we talk about states, diplomacy is very important. Uh, so face-to-face uh, uh, -face talks, uh, visiting each other, very important let alone uh, critical minerals or uh, economic benefits. Uh, but also uh, I have noticed that uh, new initiative is based on what we had before during uh, 30 years of uh, interaction between our states. And uh, now uh, the word uh, Silk Road, K Silk Road is uh, very significant because Silk Road, Road is what we are in Central Asia. We were part of the Silk Road but not only part, but we were center of Silk Road. So I think Korea uh, now uh, found right way, right tone uh, to address issues, to cooperate with us, to build friendship. And uh, I think that is uh, most significant for me. The K Silk Road uh, initiative encompasses cooperation with Central Asia in resources and uh, official development assistance, as well as cultural and people to people exchanges. Uh, and so, as you mentioned, it's similar cooperation uh, has been there before, but hopefully the new push for the K Silk Road initiative will create a new momentum to further elevate a partnership between Korea and Central Asia. Now, zooming in on a Korea-Turkmenistan cooperation, the two sides agreed to boost cooperation in large-scale energy and infrastructure projects worth a total of over $6 billion. Now, how do you evaluate those agreements made? And what are your prospects for future Korea-Turkmenistan industrial cooperation? 
Well, according to World Bank, uh, Turkmenistan has a significant uh, deposits of gas uh, on land and offshore. And uh, I think uh, Turkmenistan, obviously, as other states need needs cooperation, technology, know-how from developed countries like South Korea. Uh, the fact that uh, South Korean president, uh, actually it is a, a tireless effort by him uh, visiting three countries in a week time. It's uh, not easy uh, for presidents uh, to take uh, that much uh, time out of their busy schedule. But still, uh, Turkmenistan, uh, in my opinion, will benefit uh, from this visit. Uh, uh, he was accompanied by uh, business leaders. Uh, uh, Hyundai Engineering was there. Dusan Enability was there. Energyability was there. So uh, uh, Turkmenistan has gas, and uh, Korea has technology. So good match, I think. And, uh, 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 probably uh, these are not these two projects are not uh, lost in my opinion. I think you put it in a very simple and accurate way. Korea has the technology. Turkmenistan has the gas. Uh, according to my research, Korea is the world's fourth largest buyer of crude and gas, while Turkmenistan is the world's fourth largest producer of natural gas. So it's a, clearly it's a win-win for both countries. And uh, Korean companies like Hyundai Engineering, as you briefly mentioned, uh, has already been deeply engaged in projects with Turkmenistan. So that familiarity there could also be a plus for both sides. President Yoon stressed the need to further accelerate economic cooperation with Turkmenistan, also signing uh, the what's called trade and investment promotion framework. Do you think President Yoon's trip has laid the foundation for Korea and Turkmenistan to further expand trade that relatively remains weak? Right. Uh, in terms of trade, uh, numbers are not significant, but uh, there's a room uh, for growth. And the uh, most important thing is that uh, before uh, Turkmenistan uh, didn't receive enough attention, I think, from Seoul. Now, President was there, and uh, uh, Silk Road Initiative also means uh, assistance and a drive. Uh, which can be said in, you know, in simple words, follow up. So projects will be followed up. And uh, uh, I think if you put input, then you get output also. Now to Kazakhstan. Leaders of Korea and Kazakhstan agreed to broaden the scope of the two countries' economic cooperation to beyond traditional boundaries, now focusing more on critical mineral supply chains. How do you foresee the two countries working together for uh, joint exploration, development, as well as commercialization of critical minerals? I think start uh, is already there. Uh, Kigam and uh, Kazakh uh, committee, uh, relevant committee, signed MOU recently, and. Uh, Kigam already uh, has discovered uh, uh, lithium in, uh, in East Kazakhstan region. And it is a big deposit, around 15 uh, billion US dollars. And uh, this is a start, good start. I think uh, Korea was given this deposit not by chance, because Kazakh uh, scientists and uh, relevant authorities had enough information that this place might uh, contain lithium, enough lithium for bilateral projects, so I think it's a good start. The, as you've uh, briefly mentioned, the Korea Institute of Geoscience and Mineral Resources have worked very closely with Kazakh scientists and researchers and officials uh, for the past three years, they say, uh, to win the exclusive rights to explore lithium mines in Kazakhstan. And, and we hear that the select lithium mines in Kazakhstan is estimated to contain over 25,000 tons of lithium, which is enough to produce batteries for over 3 million electric vehicles. Now, that's a lot. Right. So uh, some very exciting development, and we'll keep our fingers crossed for some very successful results. 
Korea and Kazakhstan also vowed to boost cooperation in the energy sector. They signed a slew of MOUs in areas including renewable energy, the SMR, or the small modular nuclear reactors, uh, also in modernization of older plants as well as gas processing plants as well. How do you assess the competitiveness of Korean companies in those areas? Uh, from my uh, experience in Korea, actually I have visited uh, Dusan's facilities back in 1997 when it was uh, Hanguk Chungong Op, uh, and then it was privatized in 1997. Even at uh, that time, yeah, I was impressed by facilities, uh, by uh, size, sheer size of turbines. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, Dusan uh, is a not a new player in Kazakhstan. Uh, it has already built uh, one big project in Karabatan. It's a uh, oil rich uh, Western Kazakhstan region. So uh, again, in Western Kazakhstan, uh, Dusan will be uh, building another big project. It's a little less than $1 billion project, but still it's a big amount, big project. And uh, Dusan's chairman, uh, met uh, two or three days ago uh, uh, the Kazakh president uh, and uh, I think uh, Dusan has a promising future in Kazakhstan. And uh, if I may add, uh, Korean, uh, when it comes to nuclear power plants, Korea uh, is known not only for its technological edge, but also for its cost effectiveness, right? Costs are relatively lower compared to its international competitors. And it's a field that has full government support, that is backed by full government support. So it is uh, definitely one of Korea's most competitive industries. And in related question, how are Koreans or Korean companies generally perceived uh, in Kazakhstan? Uh, and what could be some challenges Korean companies could face along the way during their course of expanding economic cooperation with their Kazakh counterparts? I can say two things. First, uh, Korean companies are well known in Kazakhstan. Probably Korea is one of few countries, industrialized countries, uh, which are building something in Kazakhstan. It is very important for our government and for our people to see uh, it is important part. And the second thing I wanted to mention uh, is uh, you are right to say that uh, Kazakhstan and Central Asia is a very competitive market. We have neighbors, big neighbors, uh, including China. Uh, for example, copper is one of uh, major export items for Kazakhstan economy. And uh, China is now building a big uh, multi-billion dollar uh, copper plant in East Kazakhstan. So uh, it is important for Korean companies not only be competitive in terms of uh, technology, know-how, etc., but also uh, it is very important to have uh, political muscles. Uh, yeah, so that's why this visit is important. Now you briefly mentioned about the major regional players like China as well as the U.S. Uh, vying to further boost their economic cooperation with Central Asian nations and sort of inf uh, uh, increase their influence in the region. Now, what do you think about that? How does Kazakhstan or other uh, Central Asian nations balance those, uh, those um, efforts being made by big regional players? This is market, you know, you have uh, more offers, you can get better product, you can find better solution for your existing problems or issues. So uh, being in the center of uh, attention from big players is good, uh, but it is also, uh, you know, very important uh, from our side to uh, be able to choose. Uh, and uh, that is most important part of uh, all this competition, being able to choose uh, best among other options. And uh, Korea, in my mind, is one of the best options for Kazakhstan because Korea is a developed country. Uh, there is no uh, security threat from uh, Korean side to uh, Kazakhstan or Central Asian countries. And uh, we have seen from our experience that if Korean companies start something, they usually finish. 
Now, during the Korea-Uzbekistan summit that concluded just a few hours ago, uh, the two leaders signed a nearly a near $200 million export deal for South Korea to supply homegrown KTX bullet train to Uzbekistan. How do you view this development and also what other aspects of the summit stood out to you? Actually, this is a welcome development uh, for Uzbekistan. Uh, from our experience, Kazakhstan also had similar uh, project with uh, Hyundai Rotem company, which uh, makes this uh, uh, subway uh, you know, locomotives, etc. Uh, and uh, uh, quality is best. Almaty subway is, you know, one of best uh, infrastructure in Almaty city, which is our. Uh, biggest city and uh, commercial capital of Kazakhstan and Central Asia. So uh, it is welcoming, good. And uh, what I have learned from the, today's uh, press conference, uh, and uh, I think it is most probably most important thing, not economic numbers, but people. Uzbekistan has 11,000 students in South Korea. It is excellent result for Uzbekistan and for Korea. It means that you are building future for both countries, for your friendship and for your uh, core prosperity. I think you've highlighted a very important point there. Uh, President Yoon, during his dialogue with young Uzbek entrepreneurs uh, yesterday, he invited more young uh, Uzbekistan people to come to Korea uh, as part of his efforts to attract more young foreign talents, as well as to further boost bilateral exchanges between uh, Korea and Uzbekistan. And he has also stressed uh, that the need to further advance the special strategic partnership between Korea and Uzbekistan. So uh, the, the future ahead for both countries looking very promising. What is your advice to the South Korean government as well as the private sector regarding future directions of Korea and Central Asia relations? I'm not sure whether I'm in a position to give advice to uh, South sure Korean uh, government. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm uh, very uh, delighted to see how uh, relations are uh, evolving between uh, South Korea and the Central Asian governments and uh, states and the people. People uh, are most important and people-to-people uh, -people, uh, contact, uh, uh, diplomacy, as uh, it was, it is indicated in a K Silk Road initiative, uh, is most important part. And uh, uh, what kind of advice I can give? Uh, I think that uh, uh, Central Asian states uh, are old enough. Uh, historically, uh, we have uh, civilization uh, dating back to thousands of years. Uh, main uh, export item historically was religion. Uh, for example, Buddhism came uh, from India through Central Asia to Han China and Korea. Uh, and uh, uh, culturally, we are very close uh, because of Silk Road. So my uh, advice is just uh, to rely on uh, uh, more on uh, also Central Asian uh, soft power to uh, help to develop Central Asian uh, soft power, education, science. And uh, I'm not uh, uh, saying that uh, nothing has been done, uh, particularly with vis-a-vis uh, -vis with Kazakhstan, uh, Central Asia will get uh, uh, KAIST branch in uh, Turkestan city, AI department will be opened in Kızılarda city by Soltech. So uh, things are being done and uh, I hope that we will have more in the future. President Yun's trip to Central Asia was primarily focused on expanding economic cooperation, but he also discussed a bit about North Korea with uh, Central Asian leaders. Uh, he earned support uh, for from Central Asia and Korea, as well as its allies' efforts to denuclearize North Korea. Now, Kazakhstan uh, is a country that sought voluntary denuclearization in exchange for economic benefits. Do you still believe that North Korea can learn from Kazakhstan's denuclearization experience? You know, this is practical thing. Uh, Pyongyang has no other option. But, but to denuclearize. It's a, it's a practical option. And there is 
no way out for North Korea, yes. but to denuclearize, and uh, we cannot stress that importance enough. Um, since we have a bit more time left, I want to ask you about the role of the Koryo people, the Koryo in, in Central Asia. How can we further expand their roles uh, as bridges between Korea and Central Asia? I cannot overemphasize by uh, pointing out that uh, our uh, Koreans uh, have been, a, we say, as a golden bridge between Central Asia and uh, uh, Republic of Korea. Uh, most important thing for our uh, Koreans is uh, identity, language, culture. During Soviet time, uh, they uh, didn't have much opportunity because they were deported from uh, Far East and uh, Central Asia was a second home. But now uh, we have fourth generation of uh, Koreans of Central Asia, which are, are prospering. Uh, they are everywhere. Uh, one of probably several of uh, Kazakhstan's richest people are of uh, Korean origin, our local Koreans. Uh, I think what they need is just uh, to support in terms of culture, language. That is the most important thing for them. All right, we'll conclude our discussion there. Uh, and hopefully President Yoon's Central Asia tour will create a new platform to further boost strategic, economic, as well as political partnership between Korea and Central Asian nations. Thank you so much, Professor Bakisha, for making time for us and sharing your valuable insights. Thank you for inviting me. And that brings us to the end of this show. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back with more same time next week. Have a great weekend.